Rufus Aggression. And as your 24th of June 2002 edition of Monday Night Raw, and people will say this is the exact point the Rufus Aggression took off, and I agree with them. Well, it may as well be. I mean, McMahon literally came out and said, I want one thing, Rufus Aggression. I mean, if this isn't the start of the era, then... What so, the hell is? So we went and gave you an extra, what, three months before this? Aye, we... <laughs> That's how great we are. Well, you can't really start, you know, you have to start at the brand split, don't you? Like, I mean, come on. Nah, you have to, but McMahon comes out here, if this was uh, two Total Extreme Wrestling, I'd give this an A star, an Aye. A plus. McMahon comes out and cuts the best promo of the show. Unfortunately, the show goes downhill for here, but then again, it was a good start. It was always going to go downhill for here. But McMahon cutting a promo that today's current roster could only fucking dream of cutting so much passion in the guy's voice, you know, it, it feels like he meant it, it felt like his business was on the line, and it probably was, you know, he's probably looking at the, the ratings and his bank balance, and he's thinking, you know what, see, ever since I put WCW to business, things have been kind of shit, you know, Austin's no, here, business. Austin's no here, Rock's taking time off, fucking Hogan can barely walk, it's what the hell's happening, brother, come on, dead man, I need you. So I, uh, I guess he needs some new stars, and I think when you look at it, I mean, I think 2002 is sort of a transitional period in wrestling because the the roster, no doubt about it, is bloated, right, with great wrestlers, but you feel like the guys at the very top are either on their way out or on the verge of being on their way out, and, the, you know, they, they haven't really, there's no one really from, the, like, the upper mid card really getting pushed through now as, as the next top guy. Do you not feel that? You feel like, well, Rock's going to be gone in less than a year. Austin's gone. Austin's pretty much gone. The Rock is basically gone. He's there, but he's not full-time, so he's gone. I mean, Hogan's there, but is he really there? I mean, he's there somewhere. Like, but... We'll talk about SmackDown, because I think SmackDown's got the most stars, right? You look at this Raw, he's looking around the ring, and there's just... You've got Van Damme and Booker T. I like Van Damme and Booker T. But they're not, they're not at their pinnacle here. That was... The previous year when they were pushed in the alliance. The way I see it, right? How many people on this raw roster would main event a pay per view? Exactly, and there's not many. The guy that's holding the belt, Michaels and Nash, who don't wrestle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Van Dam and Booker T could main event a pay per view. I mean, they did. That was in the previous year. At this current point, could they? I'm not too convinced. I, I think they would. Do, I think they would both look at a place. I believe at Unforgiven 2002, it might actually be Triple H versus Van Dam in the main event, or it could be another match. But I know Van Dam does challenge for the belt. But at this current point, absolutely, it would stick out like a sore thumb, unless you did like the NWO versus like the the Raw roster. But then again, no, I'm not. Say, I'm not saying a multi man. Of course, a multi person matchup. They could be in the main. I'm on about singles. I mean, you look at. You got you know you look at the, the last few like pay per few main events. You've had Triple H, Taker. You've had Taker Hogan, Triple H Hogan, Mania. You had like Jericho Triple H before that. I think it was Jericho Austin. I just you know I just don't really see RVD or Booker T main event in a pay per few. No, and uh, of course Brock did win the King of the Ring, which therefore guarantees him a spot at SummerSlam against the undisputed heavyweight champion. So. Brock, but does Brock feel out of place in that? He is, he's just, uh, 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 we've got to be honest, like, Brock's literally only been on TV a couple of months. He, 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 yeah, he's unbeaten, he's the new king of the ring, but he, he's not, he doesn't feel like a main event guy to me. He just feel, And plus, I don't think he's, at, looking back, I don't think he was booked that strongly. Lots of help for Paul Heyman to win his matches. I think even, Bro I think it's way too soon Brock wins the title. Obviously, he has not won it yet, like, but, <laughs> I, I just can't picture Brock Lesnar being champ at the moment. It's obviously way too soon, but if he leaves at Mania 20, like, I mean, how much longer could they wait? Of course they knew he was, they didn't know he was going to leave, but how long could you realistically... You know, you want the Brock on top for as long as he's going to be there, and pretty much he is. Once he wins the title at SummerSlam, that is him until he leaves, main fenter. So, that's the way it's done, but McMahon goes round, he looks at Tommy Dreamer, he looks at Raven, he looks at Bubba Ray, he looks at Rob Van Damme, he looks at everybody, man. He demands ruthless aggression. But then who come out? Bump on a bit of the NWO, brother. And they... Yeah, but hold on. Let, let's just quickly talk about the rosters one wee second here. Ron, right, Taker, I know he's on both shows, but to me, he feels more like a SmackDown guy because 
<laughs> he's actually been defending the belt on SmackDown. He's been defending the belt against people that are on SmackDown. He's turned up on Raw and he's had many rivalries with like Tommy Dreamer and Jeff Hardy. But it's like mid-card stuff. You feel like when Taker's been on Raw, he's a mid-carder. Tonight, where was he? In the mid-card. Randy Orton, was it on Raw or SmackDown? Anyway, mid-card. Tommy Dreamer, mid-card. Orton was on uh, SmackDown, mate. Right, but my point is, right, when he's on SmackDown and he's feuding with Triple H and Hogan, he, he feels more like a main eventer. So I get it, Taker's on both shows, but I see him at this point in time, I see him as more of a SmackDown guy. You've got Triple H on SmackDown, The Rock on SmackDown, Hulk Hogan on SmackDown, Kurt Angle on SmackDown, Edge is getting a mega push at the moment on SmackDown. I just look at Raw, man, and it's like, I think they done Raw massively dirty here in the brand split. And this is at a time when Raw was pushed as the A show, make no mistake about it, right? This is not 2023 when SmackDown's on Fox and SmackDown's the, the number one show and the bloodline hog all the belts on SmackDown. In 2002, Raw was the live show, SmackDown was the tape show. And again, like, why would they do that, though? Because, like, why would they purposely book Austin so shit against Flair when they realistically need to book Austin and Flair as fucking untouchable to make Raw seem good? Yeah, like, Raw gets Austin, but then he's gone. Raw has The Undertaker, but, like I say, the, now that he's champ, he's on both shows and he feels more like a SmackDown guy at this stage. Raw has the NWO, but Scott Hall's gone. They brought in HBK, who isn't wrestling. Kevin Nash is hurt, so the only two active guys really are X-Pac and Big Show. That doesn't feel like NWO to me, that, that feels like mid-card at best. Raw's got Chris Benoit, or is that SmackDown? SmackDown, either, either way, he's fucking but he's not, he's, he's not, not on SmackDown until he's not he's doing anything. Cleared. But you look at Ric Flair's picks, I mean, who did he pick? He picked, I'm pretty sure, he picked Maven? Yep. He picked Lita? No, no disrespect to Lita, I love Lita, but he picked Lita. He picked Bubba Ray? I'm pretty sure he picked Bradshaw in the top 10 as well. Aye. And where are these guys? I mean, these are fucking nowhere, so I mean... They're yeah, standing in the ring look like a package job or something. I'm not, say, I'm not saying I don't like Bradshaw and I don't like Bubba Ray, like, but I mean, and they have, in the first few months, they've been pushed as some of the top faces on Raw, but I think that just shows you how much the Raw roster's lacking, that Bradshaw and Bubba Ray have been pushed as two of the top faces. I'm not saying they're not great guys, but I mean, literally... They went from being like just tag team wrestlers to you're supposed to believe that these are two of the top main event baby faces on Raw. Like as much not, as people I'm not hate, buying it, as much as people it. hate Triple H, they had to move him to Raw. And they moved Jericho as well, pretty much at the same time, I think. Aye, something like that. But they had to. But like back to the point we were making, the NWO came out. Nash says, "How many main WrestleMania main events have you guys done?" And does that not just sum up our point though? Yeah, there is no main eventers here. I know, but right, I don't know if I'm how, how many is X Pac in uh, <laughs> Big, well, Big Show's better than one, like, but. Ah, fuck out. I don't really count Big Show in that one. He was just there making up the number. Oh, come on, literally. Anybody could have done that. Oh, big no. Daddy V. Fucking Andre the Giant. You just need a big guy to be Shane McMahon's buddy. That was that was about the McMahon's. I mean, literally anybody could have. Fucking been. Dash made a faint it, man, when it was pish. I mean, it's just. I don't know. I, I'm not going to bury the raw roster anymore. But I think there's a reason why we've not really thought Rod has been good in a while. Yeah. And it's because fucking Austin's not there and the people that are there just aren't main event. There's nothing not good, but they're just not just not quite there yet. Exactly. But yeah, we basically get the NW saying what we've been saying for the past 10 minutes. They yeah. just bury everyone in the ring. Basically, Nash says, you guys are all bums. He's not a user of WrestleMania, uh, main event at WrestleMania. Yeah, so, then McMahon says... The only, two, wait, the only two guys that have main event at WrestleMania are the two guys McMahon straight off the bat says they hate wrestling tonight. <laughs> I mean, you know, McMahon says that uh, the NW is going to be in action with Booker T and Goldust, but it's not going to be HBK and it's not going to be Kevin Nash. So there's only two guys around ringside that have actually main event at WrestleMania are not going to be involved. Uh, on tonight's show. Yeah, and he like he, he really put Sean over like he was like up his up his ass like it was ninety seven. No, fuck me. Is he still paying him seventy five grand did, a year or whatever? Seven hundred and fifty. He then says to Nash that he could join his friend Scott in the unemployment line. Nash gives him the middle finger while scratching his nose. I, I like that. Big key, big key. 
Big Kevin Nash. So it's announced we've got X Pack and the Big Show. Yay, taking on Booker T and Goldust. Like, see when they say NWO versus Booker T and Goldust, it sounds good. But seeing you break it down, it's Booker T and Goldust versus fucking Nash and no, Big Show and X Pack. It's, it's fucking mid card. And oh. funnily enough, it took place in the mid card. And that's it. Talk about mid cards with Bradshaw and Spike Dudley taking on Regal and Nowinski. No, but I imagine like the like is it back a couple of years ago? It's like ah, The Rock and Austin. You're gonna go. Um, it's gonna be a tag team match. Austin and The Rock taking on the Ministry of Darkness, and you've got like Triple H and um, no, the Corporate Ministry. And you've got like Triple H and Undertaker standing at the front. And then McMahon goes, but it's not gonna be Triple H. It's not going to be the Undertaker either. It's going to be Fissera and Naked Midian, brother. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Do you not agree? Like, no, I do agree. On. I do agree, but do you agree with this? Bradshaw and Spike Dudley lose to Regal and Nowinski. What we match this was? Well, I do agree with it because it did happen. Like, I will thoughts. Bradshaw has been... He was I mean, he beat Scott Hall. When have you beaten Scott Hall to losing to Christopher Nowinski? Yeah, it's not good. Now, King says that Christopher Nowinski's got this ruthless aggression that Finney Mac wants. I don't really see it. I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't really like this pairing of Rigo and Nowinski. For me, Rigo works better when he's on his own. Unless he's with Tajiri. Well, that, that was yeah. great stuff. But I think Rigo's been doing hell ever since teaming up with Nowinski. Absolutely. You just get less, a couple of weeks. You just get less of him because it's like you're, you get any time Rigo was involved on the screen, you're getting 100%. Now it's like you're getting 50% of Rigo. Exactly, but we're, we get McMahon, he meets backstage with Slaughter, he says he doesn't like Tommy Dreamer, and he doesn't like that guy with the weird hair, Raven, or whatever his name is, I put them out of business. He wants, he wants to see the last of one of them tonight, Books, Raven versus Tommy Dreamer, whoever loses will be gone from Raw. I'll tell you what, can he not do that in this week's Raw, in real life? 30 man, battle royal, <laughs> winner stays, 29 goes, I'd fucking take it, that's what he should do. Uh, I'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, but like, I know Raven and Dreamer have been booked as jokes, but I mean, it's like two big names in the fucking wrestling landscape of ECW. One of them know. has to go, it's a big fucking match. Well, surely there's worse people on the roster that could have went over. Actually, I like Raven. No spoilers, like, who really uh-huh. is like, but. Uh, then Jackie Gaeta strips for Mr. McMahon. If this happened today, I'm sure people would be wanting McMahon cancelled, so. He I mean, did it 21 years ago. Taker comes in, she puts her clothes back on and leaves, and then just Taker's not happy with McMahon. And that's pretty much it. I mean, nothing really... Yeah, nothing groundbreaking. No, no, it's just Taker. Taker feels like McMahon's little bitch in the past. I don't know. Oh, he's, like... he's just bitching to him. I didn't like it. Didn't like it whatsoever. We have Bubba Ray versus Eddie Guerrero. Bubba Ray dominates for a minute, then Guerrero rolls him up, but Bubba Ray weighs too much, so he falls on Guerrero, looking like he pins Guerrero. Yeah, this looked like Bubba Ray got the pinfall, but the referee gives the win to Eddie Guerrero. How can Eddie, how can Eddie get the win when he's the one on his back? I don't know. Weird. It made, made no sense to me. But... Bubba, though, batters Eddie Guerrero, but who comes out? Chris Benoit. Bubba puts Eddie through a table, then Benoit puts the cross face on Bubba. Ruthless aggression. Uh, wait, why is Ben Warren raw? This whole feud's been kind of shit. Like, like Bubba Ray's, Bubba Ray's been put in the role of Austin, where he's feuding with these two and Flair. I know these two turn on Flair, but you get my point. I can't even. Uh, it was Eddie versus Flair at the pay per view, wasn't it? Yeah, like he's literally been put into that role. We then get Finn. Yet speaking of Rick Flair, where was he? Flair made a fit. Whoa, Flair made a fit. No, he didn't mean a fit. Mania, did he? I think no. That's mad that Rick Flair never did. Where's the show tonight? I know he wasn't, but Rey Mysterio is coming soon. He's coming, yeah. 619. San Diego, man. Then we get Goldust, uh, Crocodile Hunter Steve Irwin. I uh, impersonating Steve Irwin. He enters the NWO locker room and he, he's like, oh, we're approaching a big, a big, uh, wild, big show. Show a part of us. <laughs> I like Goldust. I mean, he might be a weird freak, but he's our weird freak. Exactly. Then sees X Pack come out the toilet, calls him a greasy rat. Bandana rat. Goldust then gets chased by X Pack. During this, though, the Hardy Boys say they're going to have to go their separate ways because there's no tag titles on Raw. They only figure this out three months later. <laughs> and Matt, I guess, does they want to be in Jeff's shadow, so. Yeah. But then X Pack turns the corner, bang! Kilt with a trash can led to the coupon by Booker T. Can you dig that, sucker? Would this not have been the perfect time for Nash and Michaels to step up and be like, right, we're taking the place of X-Pac? <laughs> Which one? The guy with the fucking legs that don't work or the guy who's lost his smell? His, leg, his legs lost their smell. Come on, man, someday. 
Uh, then we get a wee vignette with the, the WWE, WWF changing to WWE, and it's like some guy, he's got like a WWE logo as a head, and then he, get, he gets slapped by a woman, and the, the F falls off, and then he's like, the, oh, then all the women love him. So when he's got the F, no woman wants to be near him. He loses the F, and all the women are over him. Kind of funny. It was funny. All, all these we get the F out segments have been funny. Tom, it's sad though. Tommy Dreamer versus Raven, one must go. It was weird. Tommy Dreamer's hitting his finisher, which is the DDT. He hits it about ten times, but like they're not really making it as his finisher. Yeah, and then he hits a Death Valley driver that got zero reaction, but it got, it got a one, two, three. Tell you what, King put this match over. He said it was like I can't remember a match the last I'm time with this winner takes. Like what the fuck? Jesus what? Christ! Um, I remember the winner takes all. Or uh, any match before this? Like I don't know. I mean, I think this should have been a hardcore match. Why not? It's Raven's last match. You may as well go with a bang. Exactly, I don't know, yeah, it was very weird actually, why wouldn't you make a hardcore? Yeah, uh, Heyman then talks to Lesnar, he says he's going to get his coronation underway. I mean, it, it was, it's obvious Lesnar's not a king, I mean, just look at the guy, so I, 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 I'm I, glad they didn't stick like a, you know, a robe on him, and they didn't really push that he's King Lesnar. That's why they gave him the title shot. They just gave him a title shot instead, which was good. See, nowadays where everyone who wins the King of the Ring or Queen of the Ring, has to change their gimmick to be a king or queen. Just doesn't work, right? Maybe Regal suits it. And, you know, King Booker changed his entire gimmick to suit it. But more often than not, it's just... It's just, I don't know, I think it's just shit. No, absolutely. And it just, it would have killed Brock, honestly. If Brock does the king gimmick, I don't know what happened. Would have happened. I mean, I, 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 I'm not saying this guy was, like, having like, a great career. But I think, I think ever since King Corbin... Got made it up like he, he, Corbin's careers went in the shitter. No, absolutely. But Raven is making his way out the shitter, and Matt Hardy, of all people, throws him on top of a car, starts battering him. He says, Good luck with your future endeavours. In Raven. fairness, I, it's been a long time since we watched the last episode of Raw, so I actually forgot Raven was involved with the Hardys and Taker. What the fuck was Raiden doing? Ra Raiden? Right. What was Raven doing? He's facing Jeff Hardy, I think, and then Taker came out, and then Matt came out. handcuffed and, him? Uh, and then he, he handcuffed him for Taker, then he left, or did Taker choke slam him first? I can't even remember. Uh, Lesnar comes out for his King of the Ring coronation. Uh, again, nothing really happened here. RVD came out and attacked Brock. Then Heyman and Brock went to complain to McMahon, and Heyman says that Brock can't wait till the next pay per view or whatever to get a title shot. He has to have a gold tonight. And then he makes a one on one match with RVD later. Just wasn't that good. Again, it's setting up a match we've seen quite a lot. Yeah. And I believe these two actually face at Vengeance as well, which is the next pay per view. So. Uh, then we get Jeff Hardy versus Taker. Just a throwaway match. Jeff Hardy gets squashed, really. Not a lot to say. Jeff then grabs the mic and says, Taker, I know you've whipped my ass, but it's I want It's not over. You. I want you next week, man. For the title. Pass the chip, Mark. In a, in a match I can win. Letter match. A letter match, Mark. And then Taker just kind of looks at him and is like, aye, all right, then, fair enough. And King's like, he's going to die trying. It's like, no, he's going to get high. So I'll try and... That's exactly what he's going to do. But I tell you what, throwaway match. Next week, not a throwaway match. No, next week. One of the best matches. Guy. One of the best matches on Raw, I think, in 2002. Uh, then we get Trish and Linda Miles. This wasn't one of the best Fifth, matches. No, ever definitely ever. not. Trish and Linda Miles versus Molly and Jackie Gaeta. Now, there is a tag team match, I'm pretty sure, coming up soon on Raw that is probably the worst match of 2002, but this wasn't it. Although I do believe... Linda Miles just needs to stop working the arms. Yeah, that's Linda Miles. I mean... She got in, did like an arm wrist lock, a hammer lock, you know, hold working the arms for about five minutes, tagged Trish in. Trish it's came like in. Prime Randy Orton. Trish came in for five, about five seconds, tagged Linda Miles in, and then she went back to working the arm. And then as soon as like Jackie Gera tagged out, she never ever once like sold the arm injury. So like what was the point? Just you know what it just looked like someone that didn't know what to do next. Would it not have been better if she did it on Molly Holly? Because at least you've faith in her fucking selling it. And I think Molly Holly would have done a move to transition out of it. But it was like Linda Miles had Jackie Gaeta in like an arm a hammerlock arm wrist and, and Jackie Gaeta didn't know what to do next and neither did Linda Miles. So it was like this awkward spell where she literally held her in this move for like half a minute. And this match got five minutes or something like like I feel like if it was Molly Holly, she she would would like went behind her or tried to get like a headlock takedown or and I dropped a whole day, day something to try and like go on to like the next phase of the move, but we Linda Linda Miles was literally just holding Jackie Gator's hand for like a minute. 
It was fucking weird. It was. It was horrendous. Uh, man. Trish hits the stratisfaction or whatever, gets the win over Molly Holly. Uh, there's a wee promo for the match as well. Molly talks about how she earned the title and that she's it's good to have the the title back in the, like the rightful waste of a you know a, a real woman so to speak. And then Trish calls her out for cheating and says it it's going to be a pleasure to kick her fat ass tonight, which I thought was kind of funny. Also, someone in the crowd had a a sign saying Molly Holly stole my lunch. Brilliant. Which is pretty good, like so I. Uh, then we move on to RBD. He's, he's having an interview backstage with the coach. Gets interrupted by Heyman and Lesnar. Nothing really happens here. Heyman's like, just talking the same pish. And, and then Brock's like, Shut up, Paul! And, and he, he tells RBD, Tonight you're going to see ruthless aggression. Just, I didn't, I thought it was. Didn't do it for me. Uh, then, speaking of not doing it for me, we have the NWO walking to the match. Nash kind of just like freaks out here for no reason. Well, let's say for no reason. Sean tries to be diplomatic. Let's be honest, Big Sean X Pack are pish. He did have a reason, but it just it kind of felt like out of nowhere. They're walking down the corridor, and then the next minute, Nash is freaking out saying, You better win! I'm telling you, I'll kick your ass. When you come back. I'm gonna win! I'm gonna win! I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna win. win, Nash! I'm gonna win! <laughs> win what? Special fucking Olympics? Anyway, we get Big Show and X Pac versus Goldust and Booker T up next. I mean, just a throwaway random. I thought I thought Booker T and Goldust were going to win. What, right? I thought Booker no, T I went over the top rope. Tell you what, Booker T and Goldust, right? We're on fire. I mean, see if you were betting, man, you would have bet every fucking pound. You would have bet your house on Booker T and X Pac winning, and Booker T and Goldust winning. But there's this the point in the match late on where Goldust is in the ring with Big Show. And Booker T clotheslines X Pack over the top rope, but Booker T goes over the top rope with him. And literally at that exact moment, you're just like, Booker T and Gold has chances of winning a sacrifice drastically. Go down. <laughs> goes for the kick in the nuts. Big Show just punches him. Choke slam. Good night. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, yeah, NWO. I mean, we, I mean, see, we see Nash and Michaels marking it. Who gives a fuck? Goldust and Booker T went for having like 142 thirds chance of winning, T. None. All right, it was. It was Took a drastic change. Booker, to, uh, yeah, HBK and Nash are happy, but for what? Why? I mean, but these are two <laughs> guys that have made a fan to me. He beat Goldust and <laughs> fuck me. That's really what it is. If you break it down, you got a win over Goldust. Whoop they do. And then uh, made a fan, Brock Lesnar, RVD, Intercontinental title, the big bad Brock Lesnar, the, the unbeatable beast Brock Lesnar was about to get beat by RVD. And Heyman had to crawl in the ring, make the save. And then after that, we have RVD, it literally got the better of Brock Lesnar. Then he hit a drop kick on Heyman, hit the five star frog splash on Heyman, and then Brock Lesnar pulls him out the ring, power bombs him through the announce table, raw ends. Brock Lesnar, RVD, I feel like it's a match that we've seen three or four times recently. And I'm going to say it some more. But we have to rate it. I feel like it's probably the most average draw you're going to get with like one of the greatest opening segments of a show. I mean it is, but an, a good open, a great opening segment can only carry it so much. I'm going to get a six. six. Oh, well, and there we go. go, six out of ten, guys. Check out the top five moments. Check out SmackDown, and die till then. Peace.